Hey guys, today we're going to do a rendering demonstration. I'm going to be drawing this particular sofa with Cali Art markers. Now, when you first draw your sofa or anything really, you're going to look at the reference image and you see okay, the overall height to the overall width. This is about two, one to three. So I've got the overall shape, or not shape, but the, the dimensions. And then I'm going to go ahead and sketch within that parameter. So I've got the height of the sofa and the width of the sofa, and I'm basically cutting into the overall width of it. So that gives me the approximate um, ratio, the proportions, so it doesn't look odd. Um, now I'm drawing within that box, and I'm thinking, okay, where is the top of the sofa cushion? Where are the cushions? Divide the width of it. There's three sets here. And now I have the overall cushion that I'm going to be drawing. Then I'm going to look at the cushion shape. You know, they're long rectangular cushions. Think about, you know, is it plump? Is it really firm? So go from there. And so once you're happy with it, you can harden the lines if you want. Or if you don't want to, you don't have to. If it's a light colored sofa, I'd probably erase some of these lines to get a really light. All right, so these are the colors that I'm going to be using from the Cali Art Kit. All right, I'm kind of new to these Cali Art, so I'm going to have to test out some of these colors. Um, the best bet would be to create a color reference sheet for every color that you have in your kit so that you can use it as a visual reference because the caps don't match the colors, basically. That's what I found, but this is normal to a lot of brands. Um, so having a color reference sheet would, would be helpful, but because this is a study, I'm just using my scrap part at the top of my page. So it, it kind of depends on what your project is. So I found something that I can use for the metal legs, and I'm also using that as kind of a study on where my shadows will be. So I know that you know, some areas, the, the reason I picked this image, I mean, I love green, um, but I like the drama of the how it's dark and light. So I am, you know, studying where the value is, where it's dark, where is it light, so that it looks like it has um, some sense of volume. Okay, so you, whatever you do, you don't want to just use one marker and call it a day, unless it's just an overall really quick, rendering that you're submitting that's fine but if your your purpose is to have something that looks a little bit more realistic and has a sense of volume and texture you want to layer on your um, colors and so i found a light green that i'm using and this is um, like the base color for my my sofa everywhere i'm going to layer it and I'm going to try to be purposeful about leaving some areas light because that's where um, you're going to get that sense of drama. But I want to layer it with light first. Like this guy right here, you see how dark that the stroke is compared to the cap? It doesn't even match. So that's kind of scary. But it is scary to go dark right off the bat. So that's why I usually layer on in the beginning and then then get dark as I go along but since I pulled this up and I do like this color I'm gonna go ahead and um, finish filling in where it's gonna be a little bit darker so you're gonna have to look at your reference image so in the beginning it's best to use your reference image to kind of see okay where is it light where is it dark because later on when you draw your room for you interior design students, interior designers, um, the rooms are made up. They're, they don't exist yet. You're not using a reference. So it's good to practice with a reference until you're comfortable. So that way when you are drawing this furniture in your room that hasn't been built yet, um, you have gotten to know what it looks like and you can visualize what the shadows might be. Um, that's what I suggest. Always for the beginners, get good at actually drawing. And then after that, you can start turning your furniture pieces in space. 
All right, so feel free to use a straight edge like I've used there, especially for the edges. It really helps clean up the form. So now I've got this like spring green kind of color. that I'm kind of starting to spread everywhere. So it kind of went over some of the other colors I did before. I'm trying to create some kind of bridge because before it was too light and then I used something that was too dark. So now I'm trying to find some kind of medium color. So this is more of a blue green. So I'm thinking I'm using this for my shadow area to really anchor that contrasting value so it looks like there's a deep reveal behind this cushion or um, under the cushion and I'm trying to leave some areas white so I don't do anything with it now if I do make a mistake and I cover that then I can always use the jelly pen so that should help you a little bit um, it's still not exactly where I want it to be, so I'm going to go ahead and layer some more colors. All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and go darker, or at least make it a little bit more bold green so that um, there's not such a big contrast. I like the value scale going dark and staying light, but the if you look at the reference image, it is pretty dark, so I want to make sure it's more dark than light in my um, rendering. So here, and that should make it a little bit darker than it started. Now, I'm going to make the shadows pop a little bit more. All right, the last thing I do is I, I look for light areas that I might have forgotten and I use a jelly roll pen to kind of emphasize those areas or if I've made like a marker misstroke, um, I just use the jelly roll to clean up that edge a little bit and, and that gives it that uh, sense of contrast that I, I'd like to create in my work. All right, so I hope that helps you and I will see you next time.